Welcome back, readers. For today's interactive read aloud, we are going to read Big Red Lollipop by Ruxana Khan, illustrated by Sophie Blackhall. Now, in our read aloud today, our main character, Rubina, she is invited to a birthday party. And you might think, wait, what's so special about that? Everyone gets invited to parties. But not Rubina. Rubina and her family, they're from a different place, they have an entirely different culture, and they actually don't really celebrate birthdays. So for her, it's a big deal to get invited to her first birthday party, and she's so excited. But in this story, Rubina's mom asks her to do something that she's not happy about. Now, as we get into our read aloud today, we are going to be working on empathizing with our characters, but also thinking about our characters' actions. Because in this story, Rubina does something kind of surprising at the end, considering everything that happened at the beginning and middle part of the story. So again, as we're reading this book, we are going to be working on empathizing with our characters and also thinking about our characters' choices, their actions, and thinking about maybe why they did some things, why they made certain decisions. Are you ready? Let's get started. Big Red Lollipop by Ruxana Khan, illustrated by Sophie Blackhall. Big Red Lollipop by Ruxana Khan, illustrated by Sophie Blackhall. I'm so excited. I run all the way home from school. Readers, do you see what she has in her hand? She must be holding that birthday invitation that we talked about at the beginning. Ami, I've been invited to a birthday party. There's going to be games and toys, cake and ice cream. Can I go? Sana screams, I want to go too. Ami says, what's a birthday party? It's when they celebrate the day they were born. Why would they do that? They just do. Can I go? Now, readers, remember what I said? That Rubina's family doesn't exactly do things the same way that your family might do them. They have a different culture. They have a different way of doing things, and that's okay. But again, this is also why Rubina is so excited, because she is invited to do something that she doesn't normally get to do. But I do wonder. What her mom is going to say. Hmm. The little sister does seem like she really wants to go. I wonder if she might make Rubina take her little sister. And I wonder if she does, how Rubina is going to feel about that. Santa screams, I want to go too. I can't take her. She's not invited. Why not? says Ami. They don't do that here. Hmm. Readers. Just by looking at her face, you can probably understand how Rubina is feeling about what her mom is asking her to do. She doesn't want to do it. You can tell by her face. But it doesn't look like her mom is going to let her go to this party without taking her sister. Ami says, well, that's not fair. You call up your friend and ask if you can bring Sana, or else you can't go. But Ami, they'll laugh at me. They'll never invite me to another party again. Sana screams, I want to go too. I say, look, Sana, one day you'll get invited to your own friend's parties. Wouldn't you like that better? No, I want to go now. I beg, I plead, but Ami won't listen. I have no choice. I have to call. Sally says, all right, but it doesn't sound all right. I know she thinks I'm weird. At the party, I'm the only one who brought her little sister. 
Sana has to win all the games, and when she falls down during musical chairs, she cries like a baby. Before we leave the party, Sally's mom gives us little bags. Those look like awesome party bags, readers. You see? Her mom put in candy, some toys, and that big red lollipop we saw on the cover. Inside, there are chocolates and candies, a whistle, a ruby ring, and Big red lollipop. Sana eats her big red lollipop on the way home in the car. I save mine for later. Sana doesn't know how to make things last. By bedtime, her candies are all gone. Her whistle is broken and the ruby in her ring is missing. I put my big red lollipop on the top shelf of the fridge to have in the morning. All night, I dream about how good it will taste. In the morning, I get up early to have it. Santa's already up. When she sees me, she runs away. I open the fridge door. All that's left of my lollipop is a triangle stuck to a stick. Santa! Readers, let's think about what Ruvina might be feeling. Can you turn and talk and tell the person next to you? Can you share with them? What do you think Ruvina might be feeling and why she might be feeling that way? Okay, let's come back together. Now readers, in your conversations, you might agree, you might not, you might have thought something different, but I'm thinking that Ruvina is furious she is angry with her little sister. If you think back to the previous page of the story, she was looking forward to having that lollipop in the morning. And remember, she was forced to take her little sister to the party or else she wouldn't have gotten to go. So I'm thinking, readers, that she saw that lollipop as a way to kind of sort of make up for the fact that she had to take her little sister to the party and it wasn't the best time. So she might have been looking forward to having that lollipop only to find out that her sister ate it. Let's find out what happens next. I hear a sound in the front hall closet. I should have known. That's where she always hides. I shove aside the coats and boots. I'm going to get you. Quick as a rat, she scoots through my legs and runs around and around the living room. The dining room, the kitchen yelling, Ami! Ami! Help! Help! Ami comes out, rubbing her eyes. Santa runs behind Ami, for I can't get her. What's going on out here? says Ami. Santa says, Rubina's trying to get me. Ami puts her hand on her hips. Are you trying to get your little sister again? Hmm. That makes me think, readers, that maybe this isn't the first time that Ruvina and her sister have had a little bit of a problem. Because again, her mom did say, again. She ate my lollipop, the greedy thing. She ate it. Ami says, for shame. It's just a lollipop. Can't you share with your little sister? I want to cry, but I don't. Mm. Readers, for some of you who might have little brothers or sisters, or maybe even big brothers and sisters, has that ever happened to you where your grown up, where your family has talked to you about being kinder to them when maybe they actually did something to you that made you feel upset? but maybe where you know that if you talk back, you're going to get a bigger consequence. It sounds, and it also looks like Rubina knows that if she were to tell her mom anything, that she would probably get in bigger trouble. Sana runs to the fridge and brings back the triangle, stuck to the stick. Look, I didn't eat all of your lollipop. I left the triangle for you. See? 
says Ami. She didn't eat all of it. She's sharing with you. Go ahead. Take the triangle. So I have to take it. Go ahead. Eat the triangle. But I don't. With all my might, I throw it across the room. It skitters under the sofa. Santa scurries after it and eats that too. The worst thing is that all the girls at school know if they invite me to their birthday parties, I have to bring Santa. I don't get any invitations for a really long time. Readers, look at Marina's face. Can you turn and talk and share with your grown-up or with the person next to you how you think she might be feeling and why? What is making her feel that way? Let's come back together. Then, one day, Sana comes home waving an invitation. Ami, I've been invited to a birthday party. There's going to be games and toys and cake and ice cream. Can I go? Readers, can you put your fists together if you think you might know what might happen next? I definitely am making an inference thinking that maybe the same thing that happened to Rubina is going to happen to her sister, Sana, where she might be forced to take her sisters. Because that's exactly what happened to Rubina. And if her mom is going to be fair, she might ask her to do the same thing. Our little sister, Miriam, screams, I want to go too! Sana says, No, I can take her. She's not invited. Readers, that does sound exactly the same as to what happened earlier in the book. Ami says, well, it's only fair. You went to Ruvina's friend's party. Now Ruvina and Miriam can go to your friend's party. I say, leave me out of it. Ami says, fine then, you have to take Miriam. Oh, readers, look how Sana's crying. But it seems like Ruvina is going to tell her mom something. I wonder what she's going to tell her. Can you make a quick prediction as to what she might say? What she might do? Think, what would she say? What might she do? Okay, let's check your thinking. Now, it's Sana's turn to beg and plead. Ami won't listen. Sana's begging so hard she's crying. But still, Ami won't listen. I could just watch her have to take Miriam. I could just let her make a fool of herself at that party. I could... Just let her not be invited to any more parties. But something makes me tap Ami on the shoulder. What? Don't, don't make Sana take Miriam to the party. No, says Ami. No, I say. Ami thinks for a moment, then says, okay. So Sana gets to go by herself. After the party, I hear a knock on my door. What do you want? I ask Sana. Here. She hands me a big green lollipop. This is for you. Thanks, I say. After that, we're friends. Okay, readers, we did a lot of work today on empathizing with our characters, trying to understand their feelings. But now, let's take a moment to think about some of their choices. I wonder, can you turn and talk and tell the person next to you 
Why do you think Vina told her mom not to make her little sister take their youngest, their baby sister to the party? Why do you think she did that? I mean, after all, she was forced to take her little sister. So again, turn and talk and think about her choice. Why did she tell her mom not to force her little sister to take Miriam to the party? Why do you think she did that? Okay, let's come back together. So I don't know about you readers, but I'm thinking that Rina did that because she didn't want her little sister to feel the same way that she did. If you recall, readers, if you remember, after she went to her friend's party, all her other friends didn't invite her to any more parties for a really long time. She was pretty sad and lonely. Maybe that's why she probably said, don't make her, don't make her take her. But now let's think about Sana and her choices and her actions. Why do you think she gave Rubina that green lollipop? Again, turn and talk, tell your grown-up, tell the person next to you. Why do you think she did that? Okay, let's come back together. Again, your thinking does not have to match my thinking, readers. But I'm thinking, I'm guessing, that she might have done that because she understood that her sister did her a really big favor. Again, she could have gone to that party embarrassed her sister, made her have a really bad time, and I'm guessing that at the end of the party, her little sister Sana realized that she had such a great time because her sister told their mom that it might not be the best idea to have her take Miriam to the party. And she realized that, maybe, I'm thinking. So she wants to say thank you, and so she's giving her that lollipop as a way to say thank you. So we did a lot of work today, readers. Thank you for reading with me. I hope you enjoyed that book. I, I can't wait to read again with you next time. Bye-bye.